the, 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 the research project that we've proposed here with QRFL, we think is going to be absolutely critical in taking care of patients with follicular lymphoma, but also some other types of lymphoma in the near future. Uh, you know, immunotherapy, the, the most exciting examples are CAR T cells and bispecific antibodies are arguably the greatest advances in the treatment of follicular lymphoma in many decades or possibly ever. And at the same time, we don't want to oversell them because although lots of patients get remissions, sometimes those remissions last a long time, still many patients relapse. And how patients relapse is not fully understood, but the best understood example of why patients relapse is that the target of those immunotherapies, CAR T cells target CD19, sometimes bispecific antibodies target CD20. The easiest way for that cancer to work around the therapy is for those cancer cells, those lymphoma cells to lose that target. We call this antigen escape. They lose CD19 or they lose CD20, and then the therapy can no longer target the follicular lymphoma. So our goal is to just really study those antigen lost follicular lymphoma cells either when patients relapse or even prior to therapy, if you look hard enough, if you look at a billion cells, you can find a few of them that have already lost the CD19 or the CD20, that antigen escape process. So we're gonna study those cells in great detail and know how can we target those cells with some different marker on the surface or by targeting something inside of those cells. So it's a way we can make smart combination therapies with these immune therapies that have already been very promising. You know, we meet patients every day that are newly diagnosed with follicular lymphoma. It is, we say, the, the most common or the highest incidence uh, type of low-grade non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, and, and over the last 20 years as we've been doing this, we have to weirdly and sadly say to these folks, there is no cure for this disease. Um, but it's a, it's a very silly thing to say. It's, it should be there is no cure yet for this disease. Uh, my grandpa had a sister in 1945 who had Hodgkin's lymphoma and there was no cure. Now we cure almost 80% of Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's not that it's incurable. The, the disease is not incurable. We just haven't found the cure yet. Um, and this is such a common disease and uh, takes such a toll on patients and their families over time because there's a real emotional up and down. You get a therapy, you go into remission, happy relapse uh, and up and down and up and down and it's <laughs> exhausting for patients and for families but the fact that we can get so close you know we can get remissions we can get 99.9 percent .9 of the of the cancer to go away it tells you we should be able to do better and really the recent precedent is that we probably can do better because we're attacking follicular lymphoma in a different way most excitedly i think with uh, with immunotherapies so since we're so close we would love to be able to cinch this one and be able to say to patients no guarantee, but we do cure this in a significant proportion of patients. Uh, and I think it would just make the whole uh, course uh, of this disease, even no guarantees, but just knowing that there's, you know, the goal of cure would be so much more gratifying for our patients and for their families. The exciting thing about this research is that we're very lucky to sort of be standing on the shoulders of giants in terms of the advances that have been made in the last 20 years for follicular lymphoma and, and some other lymphomas as well, uh, it is unprecedented. There is no other cancer, uh, pancreas cancer, lung cancer, where the, the, where the, the progress has been this rapid uh, and this meaningful for, the, for, for patients uh, and the, the course of their lives. Um, just in the numbers of FDA approved therapies, Although lymphoma is one of the fifth most common cancer uh, around us, uh, it has more FDA approved therapies than any other cancer. So it, it tells you that the progress has been rapid and we've gotten closer and closer to the goal of not just one size fits all, but sort of personalized therapy, the right therapy for the right person because we have so many. Um, in terms of immunotherapies, we are standing on the shoulders of giants in that the, 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 the basic science has led us to these therapies with very high response rates and some durable remissions. So we see with that momentum, if we can just get a little better understanding of how sometimes these therapies don't work, we could probably go the distance to cure. Although this research project is is a bit sciency, uh, you know, we're going to use this real cutting edge uh, immune monitoring technology. One example, just to give fancy names, or be doing single cell RNA sequencing to understand out of a billion lymphoma cells in a sample, every single cell, not just the the cells uh, in mass. Uh, although it's you know very complicated in, in the technology will apply. Really, the outcome is very straightforward. We're going to understand the mechanism of how some 
with these immunotherapies like bispecific antibodies and CAR T cells, how they fail for a lot of our patients. And the outcome, therefore, is going to be how we can develop simple, better combination therapies, uh, and hopefully still well-tolerated combination therapies. It may be as simple as using two different bispecific antibodies if the cells that would have caused the first one to fail would be susceptible to the second one. So, you know, complex uh, a way of approaching the problem with very simple outcomes, better, effective, and hopefully safe combination therapies uh, that hopefully can lead towards cure for follicular lymphoma.